Hello and welcome to the virtual flower show 2023 um, and uh, welcome back and we are going to do a question time today and we've got uh, a host of knowledgeable nursery people that you probably see at the flower shows or specialists in their own field so we've got Rosie Hardy here what she doesn't know about her herbaceous perennials isn't worth knowing we've got Matt Soper there with his carnivorous plants that eats all the insects Lynn Dibley, of course, famous for streptocarpus and wonderful house plants, and Alec White, peonies and, and alstroemeria as well, but I think mainly peonies today, tree peonies and herbaceous peonies. Uh, and my name's Martin Fish, I've got the job of keeping everybody under control. So what we're going to do is answer some questions. These have been sent in uh, or been collated by our guests today from, from various customers that they've got. So we're going to start off Matt, one for you, because there seems to be a few questions coming in uh, about the plants you go. And this is a question uh, about Saracenias uh, from somebody called Mike. Um, and he wants to know if Saracenias are hardy in the UK or do they need to be grown in warm conditions? Um, yeah, they're definitely hardy. Um, we did a trial for the RHS. It's a four year trial growing all species and hybrids outside. Um, the temperature went down during the trial to minus nine which is pretty tough. Um, but to be honest, some thrived and some survived. So it is worth picking out the better varieties. But yes, they are. We didn't lose anything. Nothing died. So yeah, they are. They are hardy. But they do like a very bright, sunny position. They want to be in full sun and in a bog garden situation. They're not very good at all in shade and they're not very competitive either. So they like to be on their own in a bog garden. Right, okay. I mean, I, I've, I, you've obviously got lots and lots. I've been to your nursery and I've seen where you grow them outside in some raised mm. box gardens. Uh, I, my, my couple that I've got are just in pots. Um, and I was a bit worried that I might have lost them this winter because we, we got down to about minus eight, minus nine. Um, yeah. But they, they are alive. They, they look tatty and I've actually cut some of the old growth off them and I can just see they're starting to grow. So it's worth hanging on, isn't it? De definitely. I mean, the years I've been growing, and this is the slowest year by far, and they're at the same as yours, they're just starting to show signs of coming through, which is a good thing, to be honest, because if we get a late frost, which is quite possible, it's just going to burn off any of that growth. So I'd rather they stay down a bit longer yeah. than come up too early and they get burnt off. And this is what we're getting asked a lot by customers, that theirs haven't come up and they think they're dead. So, um, yeah, just hang on a little bit with, with those particular okay. varieties. Yeah. That, that, well, that's, yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you for that mm. question. That leads on to one that actually ties in for Rosie, because we've had somebody asking about herbaceous perennials, so hardy plants that live in the borders, but notice this year that some of them are a bit slow to push up through the ground. You know, the new shoots aren't coming through. So again, is that anything to worry about, hardy, or do you think it's just because it's been a cold spring, they're just a bit late growing? I think a lot of it stems back to the fact that everything got really badly scorched in the summer. Um, plants grew in October and November and they became very, very soft. So they were almost like they got their spring growth, but in the autumn got hit by the December cold and that knocked them back. So they've used some of them have utilized a bit of their normal storage energy um, and therefore they are much slower coming through. I think a lot of people have been going out into their gardens because we suddenly got some lovely weather and they've looked and seen there's an awful lot of dead stuff. But in actual fact, quite a lot of the herbaceous still grows from below ground level. And therefore it's the surface material is dead, but what is going to come through will come through much later. And the same with Matt, I'd rather they didn't come through early because they can get caught by the really late harsh frosts. Mm -hmm. I, and, and that's a good point, I think, with you saying, Rosie, about the, the mild weather that we had in the autumn, because it was very mild, wasn't it? Plants were growing and then all of a sudden, wham, in December, we got those heavy frosts. And I think that's damaged not only herbaceous perennials and other plants, but lots of shrubs I've noticed in the garden, things like Pittosporum in my garden was damaged, heavies have been killed. And I think it's purely because, as you say, the plants are growing, they're lush, 
they've not had time to prepare for winter and hard knock and all of a sudden they've been damaged so yeah I I, yeah I think I think the thing is with those and, and a lot of rosemaries which are now salvia aren't they a lot of those have been hit especially the uh, horizontal types because mine in my own garden are looking really sad and I think what happened is they put on new wood and that wood, as you say, didn't harden off. And if you go to these plants, they've got split stems all up the bark and they're just not going to come back from that. So I think there's a lot of death in that type of material. Yeah. OK, right. Thank you for that one. I've uh, got a question for Lynn here. This is from, uh, I think it's Mel. Some people, we don't know the names, but thank you for the questions anyway. This is Mel. Some of my older house plants have got pale leaves and brown at their tips, what's going wrong? Um, well, if it's springtime and pale leaves, it could well be just lack of feed um, from the winter time. Um, and older plants especially, probably want repotting some nice fresh compost. Um, if you don't want to repot, you can start feeding them. Um, but if you repot them, uh, fresh compost, they should have enough feed in there for four to six weeks um, so don't in feed initially and then start feeding and that should um, green up the leaves a lot um, the brown tips that generally you, you you might get it on say begonias or spider plants or something it's probably lacked down to lack of humidity in the house um, especially through the winter months we've all had the heating on um, the atmosphere gets a lot drier um, you can just trim them off and hopefully you'll get new fresh growth, um, especially with some fresh feed in there for the roots, um, and that will disappear over time. Um, or you can just raise the humidity a little bit, especially um, in the winter time, by putting the plants on a trough with some gravel underneath that you keep a little bit of water on. So um, as the water's evaporating, it's just staying around the plant and just raising the humidity level a little bit for, for the plants. And that yeah. should help them. And it happens, doesn't it, on lots of foliage plants. I mean, I, I noticed this morning, I've kept it for, just to show that everybody has this problem. Now, this is a, um, a monstera, one of the sort of dwarf forms that trails. Um, and, and I think that's probably what you're referring to. And I noticed this leaf this morning on the plant just over my shoulder there. And that is exactly, I think it's the heating in here. It's just got a little bit dry in the winter and it's the extremities of the leaf that show it. So I just pick those off. I'm going to water it and feed this afternoon and, and hopefully the new growth will be lovely. So that's good. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. Martin, can I just add something to that? Because we grow a few there quite good indoors and it can just be their old it's old foliage and mm -hmm. yeah they don't last forever and sometimes they do die off and I just give them a tidy up cut the brown bits off and the new growth going to come from the center of the plant and I've got a monster exactly the same as that with with brown leaves on the edges and and the, the, that foliage on my one has been on there since last June so it's yeah. it's getting a bit tired and the yeah, new growth hasn't started yet that's a good yeah, point but, isn't it yeah foliage yeah. lasts forever it eventually the old goes and new takes its place good point Matt yeah, because uh, it's always in the same room, spring and summer, winter, it's always there, yeah. but it's fantastic in the summer, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so we've got to remember a lot of these foliage plants originally come from tropical rainforests where they get lots mm. of moisture, so it's a bit alien being in a central heated house, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, good yeah. to keep dry on them. Good, right, okay, we've got one for Alec. Um, we've, we've actually got a couple. Um, I think the first one is somebody wants to know um, about feeding peonies. Um, obviously they want to feed them to make sure they grow strong, but they also want to encourage flowers. So is there a particular type of fertilizer you would recommend or a, a nutrient ratio balance that you would recommend, Alec, to get the best out of peonies? Well, the first thing to say is that peonies um, generally form their, their, their flower buds and what have you the previous year. So feeding it now isn't really going to increase uh, the flowering uh, capabilities of the plant this year but it is a good time to feed uh, peonies now uh, I would use something that's really well balanced um, we have our own fertilizer which you can buy on the website um, but uh, don't overfeed them is what I would say um, if you've got particularly light soil then a feed once in the spring once in the autumn is a good idea but otherwise uh, a spring feed or an autumn feed one or the other will be absolutely fine 
Okay, and could you use that same feed on a herbaceous peony and also a tree peony? That are their nutrient requirements pretty much the same? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Right, thank you very much for that one. We can go back to the ones that have come in online. Uh, we've got another one here from Matt. Um, this one is from Brian, and it's about sundew. Um, some of his sundew plants look dead. Is there still time for them to come up? Well, you probably answered this in a previous one, but sundews, are, are they as hardy as the Saracenas? Yes, yeah, probably. If you've got something like Elysiae or Capensis. There are over 300 different species, but the most commonly available ones are like Drosera Elysiae, Drosera Capensis, which are South African varieties. They are herbaceous, they do lose all their foliage and they look really sad at this time. Yeah, ours are exactly the same. And some of the Australian varieties from uh, around Victoria, the Binata complex, they die down completely. And as Rosie was saying, where it has been very cold, some of these will come back actually from under the ground, from the roots. Mm -hmm. So you've just got to wait, just wait. And this is the question we've been asked more than anything this year, because the plants, they, do, they all look dead, to be honest, Martin. <laughs> And yeah. actually, if I was looking at our Alicia, we've got about five or six hundred in the greenhouse. Just two of them are started to show just slightly, slight bit of green from under the rosette. It's a, mm -hmm. Alicia is a rosette forming plant. It forms a nice, neat rosette, but it's all brown. And you can just see a small bit of green growth coming from underneath. So once it starts to get going, you can remove that old dead rosette, rosette and allow the new growth to take over. But wow. you've just got to be patient and give them time. I mean, it wouldn't surprise you if they didn't look very good until... You know, the end of April, beginning of May, to be honest, after this year. That's the thing. We often get a bit impatient, don't we, at this time yeah. of the year, because we think spring's here and, we, you know, you see it, people want to do things too early. So sometimes you've just got to wait a little bit and give plants their natural time to do things. OK, yeah. right. Thanks for that, Matt. Rosie, um, this is one for you, I think, but anybody can obviously chip in. Uh, this is particularly about GMs, some amazing GMs around. Uh, and what I wanted to know, do you need to deadhead them to prolong the flowering and, and how do you do it? Yes, I mean, it depends on the GM you're growing. So the early spring GMs, which are the Rivali types, the water ravens ones, deadheading won't make any difference because they're only going to do one flowering session. So they're flowering early on. It's more the hybrid GMs. So there are some fabulous new varieties out there, you know, Scarlet Tempest, Totally Tangerine, fiery tempest and there are, and there are lots of other ones and yes it can help to deadhead but it's not individual deadheading so for instance if you've got something like this plant here if I can hold it still enough you've got a spray of flowers and people think when you've got a dead head like this you take that individual head off no you wait for the whole stem to actually flower and then you take the flowering stem out right down into the center of the plant down here and then it will encourage it to put on more growth so it's not a go out there every single day and cut every single dead head off it is a matter of waiting for a whole stem to finish taking it right down off into the base and then that will encourage it to carry on and flower and produce more and a lot of these hybrid GMs rebloom rebloom because they're sterile and a sterile plant isn't getting the messages sent back down to the base to say stop flowering because you you know once it's set seed it would normally have messages sent back and it would go okay I don't need to produce any more flower but when they're sterile, they're not getting those messages. So they repeat bloom, repeat bloom. And this is why people love these plants. Um, they're still perfect. And, and then there's this other fallacy which people think, oh, sterile plants are no good for insects. Well, yes, they are. They still have got pollen. They've still got nectar. They're just not capable of producing mm -hmm. seed. So they are, um, you know, really, really good because they're out for a long period. Okay, good. That's explained it. And, and I think that's also been clear to make a difference between the, the sort of revival, the earlier ones that flower for shorter and these hybrids that do go on well into the summer, don't they? So that's, that's yeah. a good answer. Thank you for that, Rosie. Similar vein for you, Lynn. Um, we've had um, a question about Streptocarpus, which I know you know a little bit about. Um, what's the best way to deadhead them? Because I know if you deadhead them, you can keep them flying for months and months and months. They're great value plants. But, but how do you deadhead them? 
But it's, it's basically just like Rosie was saying, as, as the flowers go over, you take them off. Uh, with a streptocarpus, you can take them off individually. Um, but again, you'll get a big head of flowers. And if I show you here uh, on this variety, so each stem has got maybe about four or eight flowers. As those flowers are finished on the stem, you then cut the stem right down in the base as low as you can get just to keep it tidy. Um, the, and also this, the thing with streptocarpus, yes, they will reflower all the time, but if you keep the stem down after it's flowered, it won't go to seed. So again, it won't get that message. Oh, I produce seed, I can finish flowering now. So if you stop a plant producing seed, it will carry on reblooming. So this will bloom nine months of the year but you do need to take the dead heads off and take them down to the base because otherwise you'll end up with a lot of dead sticks in the base so keep it clean and tidy inside the crown um, and it all helps to keep the plant healthy as well yeah well what variety is that one it looks a beauty um it's actually three varieties oh yes three three all together so they're all um a uh, variety called Katie is that one there, which is mutated to produce different colours. So we then put the three different varieties in the same pot and you get this lovely mixture. Wow. Um, we call it three sisters because yeah. all the three, same same botanical variety, but just different colour flowers. Beautiful. Uh, it's a nice mixture. Okay, but, right, well, flowers. thank you for now. What we're going to do is take just a short break and then we're going to come back later and we're going to ask some more questions. And I think the first question up next time is a peony one, so we'll see you in a bit. Bye.